I'm going to show you a few stereo microphone techniques that every audio engineer should know. Austrian Audio sent me these two OC818 microphones. As you'll see in a moment, these are great microphones for demonstrating stereo mic techniques, and the innovations built into them make them some of the most powerful microphones around for stereo recording. The first category of stereo microphone technique that I want to show you is called a coincident pair. The techniques in this category are called coincident pairs because the two microphones are placed in a way so that sound from any direction on the horizontal plane will reach both microphones at the same time. The main advantage of a coincident pair is that the two signals will remain time aligned, which means that they're mono compatible. The XY technique utilizes two directional microphones with the capsules placed perpendicular to one another. The left microphone faces out 45 degrees to the left, and the right microphone faces 45 degrees to the right, which results in a 90 degree offset between the two microphones. I'll route the left microphone all the way to the left speaker, and the right microphone all the way to the right speaker. Because these microphones are in cardioid mode, Sound originating from the left will be on axis with the left mic and off axis to the right mic, resulting in a louder signal in the left microphone with a more linear frequency response. This mimics the way we humans localize sounds by creating an interaural level difference, or ILD, between the left and right speaker when played back to the listener. Sounds originating in the center will appear to be in the center when played back through speakers because the signal level will be equal in both microphones when recorded, and therefore the signal will be equal in both speakers when played back. One thing about these OC818 microphones that makes them perfect for this demonstration is that they're multi-pattern mics, which means that I can change the polar pattern of each microphone. So for this next technique, I'm gonna switch each mic to bi-directional or figure eight mode. The bloom line technique is similar to XY, but instead of using a cardioid polar pattern for each mic, bloom line utilizes two bi-directional microphones. They're still perpendicular to one another and still placed in a vertical stack. The left microphone is still hard panned to the left speaker and the right microphone is still hard panned to the right speaker. You may notice that bloom line exhibits a little bit more room sound than XY because there's an additional lobe behind each microphone. So it'll pick up some of the ambiance of the room. That might be more apparent if I take a step back, putting more distance between the source and the microphones. There's also greater separation between the left and the right because a bi-directional polar pattern offers more side rejection than you'd get from a cardioid pattern. Midside typically consists of a bi-directional microphone and a cardioid microphone, although you can experiment with other polar patterns instead of cardioid. To set up a pair of microphones in midside, you'll point the bi-directional microphone to the sides with the rejection point facing the sound source, and you'll face the cardioid microphone directly at the sound source. The cardioid microphone is the mid microphone, so we'll leave it panned to the center, meaning that it's equal in both the left and right speaker during playback. The bi-directional microphone is the side microphone. We're going to duplicate the signal from this microphone in the DAW 
and invert the polarity of one copy so that the two copies are complete opposites of one another. Then we'll pan one copy to the left and the other copy to the right. I like to group these two channels together after this initial setup. While this may seem confusing at first, it's actually a very elegant technique that gives us a few really important benefits. See, by adjusting the level of the side channels in comparison to the mid channel, we can adjust the width of the stereo image after recording, something that can't be done with the other techniques. Mid side also gives us another advantage, and that's that when the three channels are summed together into mono, the side channels will simply cancel each other out, leaving only the mid microphone. As you'll see at the end of this video, the Austrian Audio OC818s take these three techniques to the next level with the free Stereo Creator plugin that comes with the mic. So stick around because you'll be amazed at what's possible using these microphones. The second category of stereo microphone technique is called a near coincident pair, meaning that the microphones aren't completely aligned in space, but they're still in relatively close proximity to one another. While this does make the recording vulnerable to some phase issues when summed to mono, it adds the advantage of interaural timing differences, or ITDs, between the left and the right speaker. This subtle difference in the time it takes for a sound to arrive at one microphone versus the other adds another element of dimension to our recordings. One of the most popular near coincident pair techniques is ORTF. ORTF is set up using two cardioid microphones placed 17 centimeters apart, pointing out at a 110 degree angle from one another. This separation between the two microphones mimics the separation between our ears, offering even more immersive experiences for the listeners. When a sound originates from the right side, for example, not only will it be more on axis with the right microphone, but it will also reach the right microphone slightly before reaching the left microphone. The next category is called a spaced pair. As you can probably guess, techniques within this category are not coincident or near coincident, but instead have much more space between the microphones. You can set up a spaced pair with omnis, cardioids, or any other polar pattern. And you can even use more than two microphones if that's what sounds best. Compared to the previous techniques, a spaced microphone technique is a little bit more difficult to find the sweet spot in terms of placement. Rather than following a specific set of parameters like with the former techniques, it's usually best to just trust your ears and adjust the placement until you find the desired stereo separation between the two microphones while maintaining a good center of your image. Listen closely for any phase interactions between the two mics and be sure not to separate the microphones too much as you may create a hole in the center, unless that's what you're going for. Every technique I've shown you up to this point in the video can be done using any pair of traditional microphones. But the innovations built into the Austrian Audio OC818s have really taken stereo recording to the next level. First of all, you can make a stereo recording using only one of these microphones. See, the two capsules within this microphone will be recorded separately. The primary output is from the capsule in the front, and the secondary output on the back of the mic comes from the capsule on the rear. The Stereo Creator app gives you the option for pseudo mid-side and pseudo stereo using only one microphone, but you can do even more with two OC818s. Using the dual output of two OC818s, that's a total of four output signals, you can record true mid-side, bloom line, and XY simultaneously 
and you can adjust the angle, the polar patterns, and the rotation all in post-production. This makes one pair of OC818s one of the most powerful and flexible stereo recording setups available. I want to thank Austrian Audio for sending me these mics and making this video possible. They sound great and it's really exciting to see actual innovations being put back into microphone technology. If you want to check these out for yourself, you can of course find a link in the description below. I'll see you in the next one.